me again and welcome back today I thought I would post a video before going live so if anybody has any questions they can refer to this video I will say see this video today we are going to talk about a number of things we're gonna really examine a lot of filings so if you like looking at filings here we go yesterday afternoon uh, Twitter user Crisco assorted numbers Crisco shout out to Crisco he uh, showed me this about the open corporates website and how he went on open corporates and saw that there had been a filing for oil Co and he brought it to my attention so thank you Chris and I thanked him and stock twits and Twitter gave him credibility and here you are again uh, so we have some sort of document filing. It said, business entity file documents. What does this mean? Well, is it an SEC or is it an estate filing? I did a search of SEC, nothing. I looked up, you see that document number, the 2022, blah, 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 blah. You know, some digits after that. That is the state of Nevada's uh, document number code. So if you're like big into engineering, you know that files should have document numbers attached to them because then you know if it's the latest version of the document or not, right? And so as a result, you know, different states have different document filing systems. This is Nevada's. It will give the year when, you know, this document was put in, followed by a, a number, chain number code, which, you know, usually just goes in sub subsequential documents that come after will be numerized. So it's a big chain of numbers. So as a result, if you cross-reference this with other Secretary of State filings on the Nevada Silver Flume, it sort of matches. It is d indeed a Secretary of State filing. Uh, not necessarily an SEC filing because nothing is pinging up. What what does this filing? What does it entail? What does this mean? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, it doesn't mean too much right now at this point because it could go a numerous amount of ways. I do not want to completely report on what the filing of this particular document means until I have more information. Now... Does this mean that bird lady can't see documents or is just guessing? No. As you know me, I like to drive out to places. I'll put in this video. Here, this was easily accessible from the road. It was in a small field. There was two pumps. One of them was active. Uh, the dates on this equipment was 2010 when it was installed. And the overgrowth grass tells me it's been at least like two years worth of Texas grass. So within the area, that's about two years worth of grass growth. Uh, so nothing has been really cut here for two years. This equipment's been sitting here, but it was installed in 2010. Again, if you look at this jar... Uh, this reminds you, if you know any of the old torchlight videos that were on the site, they had oil in a jar from the Cactus 835 well. What you're seeing in the jar is paraffin residue. That's a little bit of paraffin residue in there. Um, so there is a bit of paraffin in my local oil that's under the ground. And the formations in the Barnett Shale. Of course, torchlight is in the uh, Greater Permian Basin you know, it, it the rock, the source rock it's in is basically the same as the shale in the Permian, but it's in a different location because it's on the other side of that Diablo. I do like to drive out to places and I do like to get my feet wet. I'll hide in bushes. I've gone to businesses. I've talked to lots of people. I mean, I'll also hide outside of businesses and wait for somebody to come out and kind of like roll my way in. <laughs> And like, do, 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 act like, and fly casual. Like in Star Wars, when Han Solo is coming in and Chewie asks, what do we do? And he goes, I don't know, fly casual. That's what I try to do, fly casual. Let's examine these documents. Okay, now these, I'll preface this and say that actually these are really more or less publicly available documents. So, 
they weren't too, these particular documents weren't that hard to access. They're publicly available. You might have to pay some money to get to them, and you might have to wait a while to get to them, depending where you go. Um, but they are publicly available documents, and they will tell us a lot. So uh, I'd like to start off also by saying shout out to Jimmy Ray Powers. He gave me the Fintel link on, on these subsidiaries that have popped up for Meta. I think part of this is because the Torchlight assets, you know, kind of carried over with the merger. They're on Meta's books. Uh, as a result, all of these, you know, oil assets are now Meta subsidiaries, more or less. Um, this could be be you know listed now because maybe a lawyer filed something somewhere it wasn't publicly available for me to see we're gonna examine the ones that are highlighted today let's go into that oil co so if you go to the nevada silver film website there's not too much listed for oil co um you can see it was incorporated in august 31st and, you know, there's the shares. Now, let's examine the actual articles of incorporation for Oil Co. I will pull it up here. And if you scroll through them, it matches that of the Nevada Silver Flume website. There's not too much here. Um, and it was created, again, August 31st. You can look at the upper right hand of this document. It was incorporated August 31st. I know there's a lot of FUD saying, oh, no, Oil Co. was incorporated March. No, it was incorporated August 31st. There's there's where it says, upper right-hand corner there. Uh, George Palacaros, I guess, is on there, and Karate Chap Ken is the other director. They list their Texas addresses. They list a Texas office address as their address. That's fine. Um, and the Oil Co. is indeed in Nevada company. Okay. Let's examine the next one. And this would be Hudspeth Operating LLC. Uh, as I talked about in previous videos, we have cross-referenced and we know now that Hudspeth Operating LLC is going to be more or less Nextbridge by cross-referencing um, different people. They indeed uh were listed on the leaked Nextbridge website, and if you go to their LinkedIn, they will list Hudspeth as their current employer, Hudspeth Operating, so we know Hudspeth is Nextbridge by cross-referencing that. So let's look at the Hudspeth Operating LLC Articles of Incorporation. So now, in Texas, the Articles of Incorporation is actually called the Certificate of Formation, but they list actual articles on them. So here's the Certificate of Formation. The name of the following entity formed is Hudspeth Operating LLC. Notice how it's not like an S Corp or anything or C Corp. The filing entity formed is a limited liability company, Article 3, the purpose of which the company's formed is to be basically a legal Texas entity. Article 4, and then the registered agent, again, Robert D. Axelrod, we know that. Article 5, okay, so the company will have uh, one or more managers, and the names and the addresses of the managers are George Palacaris and Karate Chap Ken. Uh, notice, though, how they give their Nova Scotia business addresses. This is interesting because in the Oil Co. holdings, they gave the Texas address. In the certificate of formation, they give the Nova Scotia address. So I find that kind of interesting. Uh, this, this, this chain of convoluted addresses. Not that, that it's illegal or anything, I just find it like, kind of interesting. Hmm. Like, that's a difference. Why'd, why'd we do that? And let's talk about um, Hudspeth Oil, Oil Corporation. So, if you look on the Secretary of State website, you'll see that Hudspeth Oil Corporation was formed in June of 2014. That was when Torchlight was formed, was 2014. And if we dig deeper and look at the filing history of this, uh, we will see that 
It had a recent filing of December 31st, um, with an effective date January 29th. It said public information report. Let's examine that public information report. It is a franchise tax report. Now, in Texas, we have what's known as the franchise tax report. That's your annual report. It could be, like, tax due or no tax due. You will not see anything, like, money-wise or owed. But this just says that they kept up with their annual filings. You will notice that, you know, it has Greg McCabe on it as the managing manager. And if you look down, here you go, Torchlight Energy Resources. It's basically, that's the parent corporation. Torchlight Energy Resources owns 100% of that. Let's move along to the next one that I noticed, and that's the Torchlight Hazel Project. Um, again, Torchlight Hazel Project, if you look on, it's a Texas corporation, so let's go to the Texas Secretary of State. As you can see, it was first incorporated on October 1st, 2014, Plano Parkway. Okay, so this has to do with Torchlight, again... They did an annual franchise report in December of 2021. If you click on that particular filing and another franchise report due. Um, and if you look here, it says name of owned parent corporation or limited liability company, if possible. Torchlight Energy Resources, Inc. And Torchlight Energy Resources owns 100% of that. So, uh, so nothing significant really has come about yet but the fact that these companies are listed now you know is this something that fintel does we know that fintel will often list things as being like number one for short squeeze probability when it's really not uh fintel is not really known for accuracy so let's keep that in mind but let's let's keep on um, investigating here. So I was also combing around on the, you know, basically the Google Maps. Um, the images updated were fairly recently. By fairly recently, I mean like within the past six months on the Ora Grande project. And if you zoom in here in this particular location, this is a, one of the newer wells that they were drilling. Um, if you, or it could have been, you know, a recompletion of that well. If you examine this photograph and look at the rig, the drilling rig, and the shadows, and the colors, and the setup. It looked really familiar to me. Um, like I said, I dig around a lot. You know, I was looking at, at other things, such as, like, local pipelines that run close to the property. The closest pipeline to the torchlight property would be the Kinder Morgan L2000 pipeline. That's a gas pipeline, and it runs closest to the Or Grande. It takes gas westward, although at times it can be diverted down. Um, Kinder Morgan, actually, if you go on one of their websites, it will list the scheduling and the tariffs for particular pipeline changes for, you know, moving stuff from this site to this site. Really interesting. And for what company, too? It's kind of cool. Uh, no, nothing's been on there in our area that I can see. Uh, so, it's part of the L2000 pipeline, which goes from Oklahoma, Dakotas, Texas, and it goes, it makes its way to California. So, that's that pipeline. But then, if you go to El Paso, you know, then you're on the... Um, you go to the Marathon Refinery there. Once you get on that you can get eastward and you can go back to Dallas, Fort Worth after being refined and, you know, you go to uh, up through the Dakotas and that is the uh, one Magellan pipeline, uh, Magellan midstreams. So 
you know, I've examined pipelines, um, like I said, the L2000, that's that's a Kinder Morgan pipeline. So Kinder Morgan owns that particular series of pipelines um, that run by the, the Torchlight property. And if you look up information about Kinder Morgan, um, here's a picture that I found. They do own some oil properties. Um, it's under a, a, an LLC subsidiary name. It's called... Kinder Morgan Production Company, LLC. And if you look on what they own on, like, the Texas well data, uh, you will see that they own wells more or less in, like, the Sweetwater area. Um, they own it more, you know, in more of the Midland Basin area. So if you examine some pictures, like I said, you look up this stuff, you sort of, like, can remember these pictures... Seeing this Derek on the Torchlight or Grande property, the satellite image, made me instantly realize the Kinder Morgan oil production uh, rig. And they use the same type of rig. It's called the double jackknife rig. Um, so the rigs are, are, are the same. It's not the same image. The, the image I'm showing you now from Kinder Morgan is not at the Oro Grande. There's no windmills there. This is actually in their west of Sweetwater area. This is where you're going to find all those windmills in Texas. I've been through this area several times. Uh, but here's, you know, one of the rigs that they use. Notice the water truck setups. Uh, that's all those blue trucks. And then benchmark that against the torchlight satellite data. And look at the shadows of the rig. You'll notice a lot of similarities. Is it the same? Is this Kinder Morgan? You know, just because it's the same double jackknife rig and it's a similar setup doesn't necessarily mean that this is Kinder Morgan. We know that Maverick LLC does the drilling for Torch, but are they still doing the... I mean, and they did the drilling for Hudspeth, new Hudspeth, because Maverick LLC was on the recent permits for September. I've been talking about that way back when. So this kind of matches the Kinder Morgan setup, uh... But it could be a coincidence, you know, what if Kinder Morgan Oil Production, you know, also contracts out Maverick Operating LLC. So that's something to think about. I'm not saying it is Kinder Morgan or anything, but, you know, seeing these similarities, it certainly is a coincidence. Okay, guys, like I said, that's my digging skills for this week. Uh, like I said... I I've been trying to put this together, and if anybody asks me on my live stream, I will say refer to this video. MMTLP update. We're digging around. I think that's what I'll call it. I will see you soon. Goodbye.